Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mornings with Marit. We're excited today. Happy New Year, everyone. It's amazing. I can't believe we're already halfway through January. That happened awfully fast. And I'm excited to have a special guest with us today. I just want to remind everybody that if you aren't following our Facebook page, please do. It's always nice to get feedback from all of you, and you can join us there. And today, our special guest is Rochelle McCreary. So Cheryl is an executive coach and the CEO of TAO Leadership Development. And Rochelle, thank you for joining us. I know we, we watched you on a go-to webinar presentation. You actually hosted an event for them. And our own Jill Douglas and Jim Gavin were able to see your presentation. They brought you to us and we're looking forward to doing this program and other programs in the future, but a nice way to introduce you to our Texas folks. And so if you could just give us a little bit, I know you're going to introduce yourself a little bit deeper in the presentation, but maybe a highlight and what are you looking forward to in 21? Yes, I am. First of all, I am so glad to be here with you, Merritt. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to Jill. So glad to be here. And uh, yes, I'm really excited to talk about 2021 because I think with the upheaval and, uh, you know, the, the best of times and worst of times that we've been experiencing in 2020 and now in 2021, uh, I think there's some new, there's some, there's some mindset shifts and some other things that might seem counterintuitive that we really need to develop to win in 2021 and beyond. So I really wanna talk about that because we're in unprecedented times, um, trying to run businesses, trying to you know keep our families safe. And so I have some good tips and um, tricks up my sleeve I wanna share with your, with your group today. Wonderful, thank you. What we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to try and be a little bit more interactive than some of our other presentations. So many of you have done polling with us before. So I'm gonna give us just a minute here to go ahead and log in and join us for the polling. So if you've got your phones with you, please go ahead and um, go ahead and text to the phone number 37607. And what I want you to do is text in the word WIN21 and hit send. And then you should get a text message back for me. And um, Matt, if you could do it and just make sure that it's working, we'll give it a second as it goes. And uh, while we're doing that, Rochelle, anything fun you did over the holidays that uh, that you want to share while we're letting people log into that? Well, you know, it's so funny. I thought that over the, since we were, you know, staying at home, not traveling, I wasn't hosting anything. Somehow I felt like I would have more me time. And it ended up not being that way at all because I ended up on Zoom with everybody and uh, lots of family members and family all over the country um, and walking the golf. I live on a golf course, so walking the golf course. Um, so my, it, it seems like it just all went by in a blur, but a lot of Zoom holiday celebrations. That was my, that was my Christmas holiday. That, what about that for you? The, the, the theme of the year, probably. You know what? I avoided every Zoom family event <laughs> that was. I somehow, you know, it's like, oh, I didn't see your message. We were, we were nice and quiet this holiday season, but uh, now I'm so tired of Zoom. I do it all the time for work, so I avoided the family festivities yeah. of it. They think it's still not a novel idea. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so a couple questions we have for all of you as you've logged in. Um, one of the questions that we have is, you know, how would you describe your video presentation savviness? And if you could answer A, B, C, or D, or send in your answers. So, you know, I'm a rock star. I'd love to see who you are. Um, I know how to use the platform. Good, we already have some rock oh, stars in. Awesome. Awesome. Rock stars. Um, I know how to use the platform, but it's just not sexy. I'm struggling with which <laughs> is the best platform for me to shine. And I'd rather use never use a camera. I, I think I would choose B and D, if I had a choice for Cheryl, I guess we're going to force people to choose just one. <laughs> um, I will tell you back in, in March, I hated looking at myself. I guess now I'm just like, man, that's who we are. So <laughs> yeah. let's yeah. deal with it at the end yeah, of the even, day. Even though I do this work and I do training around virtual presence and online presence, um, I just, I did not like the, I didn't like cameras either for a long time. And it, you're exactly right. After a while, it's like, oh, okay, well, this is what it is, right? <laughs> So well, just I will tell camera you, on. I saw your first presentation, so I'll just give everybody a, um, a heads up. I, I had this moment of like shame, like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing? So you'll, <laughs> people will feel that moment of like, what have I been doing? But this is a new start. 
um, a new day. You can change the way you look and, and present yourself. And I'm excited about what you're going to share with the team. So good. Absolutely. We've got some good answers here. So it looks like, you know, we've got a few rock stars. Um, we got yes. most of the people are saying, hey, I could, it's just not that sexy. So how can I improve mm -hmm. and so forth? So it looks like we have some opportunity to help folks here today. Um, the other question that we have today is, you know, what do you believe is, now it may not be exactly this, but if you could only choose one of the four categories, which is what is the number one obstacle to your business success this last year, um, where would you put that? So one would be, you know, it's the economy in, in general. So obviously my clients um, or prospects are suffering. Um, the pandemic is a challenge for me as, as far as, you know, maybe even, you know, being at home or being um, distracted with family pieces, things like that, that might be happening. Mm -hmm. um, social media, obviously, you know, everybody's accelerated. We talk about how we've moved the industry, you know, five to seven years at the yes. speed of adoption of technology in the last mm -hmm. year, which is fantastic, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it, it certainly has moved the needle there. And then um, it looks like the big theme here is inability to reach new to clients, reach new which clients. I think today's yeah. presentation will be really great. Like, how do you take advantage of that? How do you um, make an impact, right, Rochelle, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in an environment that may look just a little bit different than we used to have in sort of the traditional way of, of getting in front of folks? So Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. And thank okay. you, everyone, for participating. That gives us a little bit of context, right? Um, in, in you jumping into your presentation and I'll let you get started and then I'm going to come off camera everybody but I will be back and I'll be listening in with you just like you all are and um, it looks like you're all clear it looks like it's working with Cheryl and I'm going to hand it off to you now. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Merritt. As I said, I am so thrilled to be here with you. I am so thrilled to be in this conversation about how to elevate. What are the keys? What are some keys to really level up your brand, your presence, and your influence in 2021 and beyond? So super excited to jump in and talk about this. So, you know, one of the things that's really interesting from someone who has a really great brand uh, that I think really applies uh, for, for us today is thinking about, uh, uh, oh, oops, I, I do there. Let me get this. Sorry about that. Okay, so so from Richard, I love this quote by Richard Branson um, that, you know, every success story is a tale of constant adaptation, revision, and change. And if, as, if you're an entrepreneur, you know that's the absolute truth there's you're always adapting you're always having to change you're always having to evolve and right now with the pandemic with all that is going on it seems like that evolutionary process has sped up so at the speed of light we are making changes and having to adapt and it requires some specific skills and things to be thinking about so before we dive in, I want to introduce myself to you a little, a little bit more so you get a sense of, of me. So I want to share this image first and all, first, first uh, from this film. Um, anyone know what the film is? And you can type it in the chat. And if you um, see any answers there, you can tell me, Merritt. So this is a great film. Let's see if we get any, 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 any good guesses here. Any guess what the name of this movie is? Are you getting anything, Merritt? I'm not yet. Okay, so then I'll just I'll just tell what it is. So this is a movie called The King's Speech. And this movie I used, this clip I used to introduce myself because I saw this movie some years ago and it really resonated with me. And let me tell you why. So The King's Speech is a true story. And if you've been watching The Crown, maybe that, that's been referenced a little bit on the Netflix series. But The King's Speech is a true story about Queen Elizabeth's father, King George. He was thrust into leadership unexpectedly. He was not expected to ascend to the throne. His brother, Prince Edward, was supposed to be the king. Prince Edward abdicated the throne, married the American divorcee, Wallace Simpson. This is a big historical story, I'm sure many of you know. Um, and so King George is thrust into leadership uh, and was not expecting it. And the challenge for him was he was thrust into leadership at a time when it was the dawning of the radio era. So now leaders had to get on radio, they had to communicate effectively uh, and, and be good communicators to get their messages across. And King George had a speech impediment and extreme performance anxiety. And so he was not able to communicate well using this new device called radio. 
And uh, so the royal family, were they, they look for all these uh, uh, speech therapists and sort of royal family approved the speech therapist, could not find anyone. His wife finds this man here, uh, Lionel Logue, played by the actor Jeffrey Rush. Lionel Logue, and this is a true story, true individual. Lionel Logue was a former actor and he had these real out of the box techniques. He wasn't royal family approved. He had these weird out of the box techniques and he used those techniques to coach King George and help him communicate, break through, communicate effectively and powerfully on radio, mastering his performance anxiety, mastering this new um, this new medium that he had to communicate with. And, um, and so this, it's a great film. If you've never seen it, it's a really good film. And they become friends and, and, and all that. And so what you're seeing in this scene right here is this out of the box exercise um, where King George is on the floor, actually. His wife is sitting on top of him and Lionel Logue is coaching, is coaching them. So here's why this resonated for me. When I saw this film, I thought, oh my God, I totally relate to Lionel Logue for a couple of reasons. So one reason is like Lionel Logue, I used to be a professional actor for a small part of my career and out of college. My parents are so glad that I am not an actor anymore. Um, and unlike Lionel Logue, though, I do have a strong business background. So I actually uh, am a Georgetown University trained and educated executive leadership coach. And I have a company called Dow Leadership Development where I deliver coaching and training uh, to companies all over the world. And I started my uh, career in, uh, in, in business as a performance and speech coach and presentation coach for leaders at Fortune 500 companies and government agencies and leading business schools. And I would use some of my theater techniques to help them unlock their ability to communicate powerfully. So that's the Lionel Low connection to me in, in that movie that I just shared with you. But I've worked with lots of companies really helping leaders develop their brands, develop their presence. And now I'm doing a lot of work around developing your online executive presence and communication skills. So we're going to dive in today and look at a few different things here. I'm going to skip this get to this slide. So as I said before, we are in what I call big change fast. Everything's happening at an accelerated pace. Life is coming at us fast. It's one thing after the other. You know, it's so funny in, in 2020, uh, which seems like, you know, five years ago, right? The 2020 ended. Um, but it's so interesting how in 2020, everyone's like, oh, I can't wait for this year to be over. Oh, I can't wait. And I kept thinking, mm, I don't think 2021 is going to slow down. Like we're certainly not gonna go back to the way things were in 2019, but I just didn't feel like it was gonna slow down. We are, we are in an age of disruption, right? Big changes are happening really fast and we're all scrambling to keep up. And so there's some very specific things that we need to develop in order to ride this wave of disruption of change that's happening really quickly. So I wanna share with you um, before we go into the sort of five, things that I want you to be thinking about, or five keys I want to share with you. I want to share the influence formula. This is a formula I use with my clients all the time to help them understand how influence works and how your personal brand, your, your personal presence, or your leadership presence, how that impacts your ability to influence. So in my work, um, I say that your personal brand is who you are. It is your distinct skills and strengths and imperfections and differentiators. It is who you are from the inside out, right? So it's not the facade. It's not the, you know, it's not the, you know, how you, how you look. That's a part of it. But who you are really has to do with your vision, your values, and those internal qualities. That is your brand. Now, if you take that and you think about your presence is how you show up, right? Your presence is a delivery system for your brand. Your presence is how you respond, how you engage, how you communicate, your emotional intelligence, how you show up to events and things, and how you react and respond to what is happening. That is your presence. And when you put your brand, when you have your brand and your presence together, you add those things together, that, that is what gives you the ability to influence, right? To drive a result, to get something done, to persuade other people, to get more clients, whatever it is. Um, that is where your influence comes from. It comes from who you are and how you show up. That is what allows you to influence outcomes. So if you have any questions or any thoughts about what I'm saying here, I'd love for you to put it in the chat. 
uh, and then Merritt, you can let me know. I'm going to keep going, but I just want to lay out this formula and sort of how I'm thinking about this as we move into the five keys. So Merritt, you can let me know if you have anything. I will. Great. Thank you. Okay. I got a comment that somebody said, love this. So you're doing all right. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> It's always Excellent. awkward to do a presentation when you can't see the audience. I know I speakers know. that it, we miss the most. <laughs> I know. I really, really miss that. And the other thing I'll say is sometimes I get super hyped and I talk too fast. So if that happens, somebody just say, slow down, and I'll I'll do that. Let Merritt know <laughs> I need to slow down. All right, so let's dive into these five keys I want to share with you to help you elevate your brand, your presence, and your influence in 2021 and beyond because we're on a roller coaster, I really believe. So there's five things I want us to really be thinking about, and I'm going to dive into each one of them. So the first one is taking radical responsibility, and I'll be sharing with you from one of my favorite leadership books what this really means and how I want you to be thinking about that. The second one is mastering your stress response. Uh, I'm, you, you, <laughs> if, if there's nothing else you take from this, your ability to master your, stre your stress response so that you are responsive and not reactive is the number one thing you can do to build your brand and really expand your influence uh, with such volatile times. The third thing is leveling up your vision. And I'm going to talk about really why we don't dare to dream big and why it's so important to do so. The fourth thing is you have to know your audience. So frequently in talking about branding, we talk about differentiator, like what is your differentiator? And that's very important. But I think going forward, there's some things you got to know about your audience, and that's going to be the key to build your brand. I'll talk about that. And then we're going to talk about how to shine online, which is where Merritt and Jill found me. <laughs> so we'll talk about some ways that you can really level up your online presence. So that's going to be our journey through the five keys today. So let's talk about radical responsibility, right? And and I just want to be very clear. I'm not talking about um, blame. I'm talking about radical 100% taking responsibility for your experience. And I want to share with you um, this great book that I have. Um, called 15 Commitments. Can, guys, can you see me holding up the book? Merritt, can you see my the book I'm holding up? Yep, we can see it. Perfect. Okay, Thank good. you. Yeah, so the 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership, fantastic leadership book. Um, it is something that if you purchase this book, and I have no uh, connection to this, I just use this with my clients a lot, um, but it's a really wonderful book, and it's the kind of book that you can go through again and again and again, because it has these 15 commitments and you can work on them one at a time. So I'm plugging this, but I have no relationship to this, to this book at all. But the 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership talks about, and this is why I think it's so important for 20, for, for the times that we're in now, the volatile times, it talks about this, this, these ways of leading, right? There's a to me leader, there's a to me uh, uh, leadership style, and there's a by me leadership style, right? Things are happening to me, life is happening to me, and a, a by me style. So let's go, let, let me walk you through this. And if you have, a, you know, you might want to get something to take some notes if you don't have something. So this to me leadership style is really about, a, it really sort of a victim consciousness, not victimizing, but just thinking in terms of things are happening to me, right? Life is happening to me. External forces are, are impacting my success or impacting my failure. So it's not all negative, right? But it's, it's a mindset that says there are things out there happening that are, that are causing me to succeed or causing me to fail. And my life is, is being controlled by external factors, right? So that's that sort of to me consciousness. It can devolve into blame and defensiveness. And it can, you, you can be asking questions like, well, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why, you know, why did this happen, right? Um, and so this to me consciousness is very, um, is very seductive right now because there's so many volatile things happening. There's the pandemic, there's the this, there's the that. And I, I've been noticing um, in different like headlines online or different things that'll say, you know, um, COVID-19 stole my blah, 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 or the pandemic, you know, ripped this from my blah, 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 or this, you know, it's, it's like these, the, all the language is around the victimization, right? This victim consciousness, when in fact, 
the pandemic is something that's happening, right? Or a hurricane is something that happens or an earthquake is something that happens, but it's not happening to us, right? We are experiencing it, but it's not happening to us, right? And so the more we can we can move out of that um, out of that consciousness of things happening to us, the more power we have to affect change and to actually be in what uh, they call the by me leadership mind, right? That creator consciousness. So I make life happen. And this is so important when you have big um, catastrophic events that there, we have no control over, right? We're, when we have these big events that are happening, um, it's so important to be in a space of, I am actually making my life happen or in the space of everything that happens is for my learning and for my growth, right? Or in the space of curiosity and openness to learning and um, asking, how is this event, this circumstance, this situation, an ally for my growth, right? So these are the two, um, there are four different ways of leading that are laid out in this book, but these are the two fundamental ones. And here's the thing that's interesting. Um, it's not, you know, there, there are times where we can get triggered by something, where we, we can be in by me all the time. And I believe everyone here, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader, you're in that by me mode. You make life happen, you're driving results, you're creating outcomes. Uh, that is the by me mode that we're in most of the time, usually as entrepreneurs, uh, as leaders. But all of us can get triggered, right? Something can happen and boom, all of a sudden, it feels like life is happening to us and feels like all these things are happening and we can get kicked back into this to me leadership mindset. And the important thing is just to be aware of it and kick, get yourself right back into, okay, yeah, this thing happened, but what can I learn from it? What, how is this an ally for my growth? What skill is this growing in me that I can then apply to my business, to my leadership, to my family, right? So this is, th these two components I have found so powerful with my executive coaching clients. So I coach clients at Fortune 100 companies, uh, VP to C-level clients. And this has been so useful in this last year, these two dynamics of really getting solidly planted in by me as quickly as you can, no matter what is happening. Uh, so that has been a, a big, big shift of taking 100% responsibility, um, not blame, but just responsibility. Okay, this happened. Here's where I am. Now, what am I What am I going to do? How do I move forward? So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Marit, do you have any, Marit, do you have any um, comments or questions? Yeah, I um, I answered the question as to who the authors were. So I, I oh, put sorry. that in the post there as well, if you want to comment on that. Sorry, guys. It's Jim Detmer, Diana Chapman, and Kaylee Warner-Klimp. But right. if you just um, search... Uh, you know, go to Amazon, 15 Commitments, yeah. or search it, you'll find them. Good. The other thing I'll say is they have lots of great videos, uh, free videos on the website. They have a great website with lots of videos that walk you through um, their book. But this has been a lifesaver for my clients to navigate through the year, through the pandemic, and through their teams to just help them get back on track pretty quickly. Great. Any other? Yeah, somebody does comment, you know, that this to them is the victim versus victor thinking, which totally makes sense, of course. And then there's a there's a comment on, you know, great mindset to 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 use. And this is a nice, good, huge paradigm shift. So people are really liking it. Um, so there's some good understanding. I think it takes stuff we might know, but put it in a different yeah. light and yeah. get us thinking about what bucket am I in right now? when I'm making decisions and I'm, I'm creating a mindset with myself and my team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and like I said, you, you don't, you don't always stay in one, in, in that, in that, in one zone, right? Something can kick you back to victim consciousness. Just, yeah. just over the holidays, um, I had, uh, so there's a lot of different stuff going on. Some, some of my team has been uh, impacted. Um, indirectly by COVID. So I had two people, of, of, I have a three person team. I had two people who were indirectly impacted, had to resign because of COVID. And then right after that, I had a kitchen um, plumbing uh, disaster in my condo um, that uh, it was just, I won't even go into all the details, but it was just like this major thing. And uh, as it turns out, I'm probably going to have to move out because there's mold and carpet got wet and all this stuff. So all this stuff happened. And, and you know, I just had to, you know, for a second, I was like, are you serious? Like, 
what is, and you know, and I had to immediately go to my mantra, which is, okay, how is this an ally for my growth? Because this is not hap this is not personal to me. It's just something that's happening. And so, what is this growing in me that will help me, you know, keep keep going in my business? So I had, I just, this is something that I use all the time, even for the little things, because we can very quickly get into that in that into that spot. So this is yeah. the fundamental, for most important thing. If for sure, you get wanna... nothing. It, this kind of reminds me of that book or the um, program, the fish video, where it talks about choose your attitude. <laughs> um, and that's ah, the thing yes. that, that it's kind of that trigger when you get into that victim mentality. It's okay, wait, choose your attitude. What can I do yeah. to make this an ally? So, yeah, lots of great comments here. Um, thank yeah. commenting on examples. And, and this is why people do use it as a reason to get yes. out of things and a good paradigm shift moving forward. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it really is. And it's so important because there, you know, there's so many big changes, big things happening um, that are, um, you know, big historical things happening that are beyond our control. So this is a good place to, to anchor ourselves. And this, and, and here's the other thing I'll say about this, um, this kind of by me thinking, right? By me mindset, by me leadership. It is a brand um, elevator. It is a brand elevator because you become the person who is positive. You know, you become the person who has some equilibrium in all of the turbulence that go that's going on. You become the person that's the beacon of uh, sanity. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you know sanity and calm uh when every when when there's chaos breaking out so this is a big this mindset shift and being planted in this mindset of, of by me is also a big brand builder and a big um it really really helps your ability to influence others right so um so great so let's move on to the second key um so Okay, so now this is the second key, and this is another big one. You know, because we're in this big change fast, the stress response for everybody is through the roof, right? The stress level is just insane with the work from home, with the pandemic, with, you know, the, the lockdown and the not lockdown and the mask and the no mask. I mean, it's just like all this stuff is going on, constant stress. Then we're on our devices all the time. That creates a level of stress. And so the biggest thing you can do right now to help yourself is you've got to master your stress response. You've got to master that response that pours hormones, stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, pumping through your body, um, you know, repeatedly, just rushing through your body repeatedly. And we know there's health, there's negative health benefits to that. There's also, when you're highly stressed, you can be highly reactive. When you're highly reactive, you can blow up your brand in one, one bad move, right? One bad move, one bad mistake, boom, you've blown up your brand, right? So you want to master your stress response. Let's talk about some ways to do that. So, um, so first one, so fundamentally, right, fundamentally, you've got to get control of your physiology, right? And, th and the first bullet I say here, breathe like a Navy SEAL. And here is the thing. Um, this is one of the things I give my clients first off the bat to elevate your presence. You got to breathe. You've got to um, literally breathe deeply enough, long enough to get mastery over your physiology and over your stress response. So scientifically, what happens is when you breathe deeply enough, long enough, it literally l begins to lower your blood pressure. It slows down your heart rate it slows down the release of adrenaline and cortisol into the system, and it actually helps clear up your cognitive process so you can think clearly, right? And it seems like, you know, breathing, uh, you know, this is so, you know, this is nothing, right? It's just too simple, it's too easy, not sophisticated, not sexy breathing. Um, but when I give this, this, this practice to my clients and I have them do a practice around this, they, especially my type A, super hyped up clients, um, you know, they really see a big difference in having a breathing practice. So practicing deep breathing. And what I usually tell them is um, that you need to get off the dance floor. Uh, and which, so what I want you to do, I want you to get used to breathing deeply. I want your stress response to be deep breathing so you can calm yourself down. And, and so I will have them set their clock or a timer for every hour 
uh, to every hour that alarm goes off and they take 15 seconds, 20 seconds to breathe deeply and then go back into the work, right? And what it does is it just helps you get off the dance floor enough so you have um, some ability to respond, not react, right? Not get triggered by stress and, and just be sort of caught up in the chaos of the dance floor. Now, um, I say breathe like a Navy SEAL because I have, my mantra has been, you gotta, if you can't control your physiology, you can't control anything else. Did not know that's what the Navy SEALs say. And I found this uh, great article and I'll, I'll uh, if you guys connect with me, I'll, I'll get you this article, but it's a great article and I think it's called Breathe Like a Navy SEAL or something like that. But actually that is a fundamental practice that the Navy SEALs have. It's called four, I think they call it, they have a practice called four box breathing. So there's a way that they, um, you know, you inhale for a number of seconds, exhale for a number of seconds. It's um, it's a, a very specific way that they breathe to calm down that nervous system, get themselves centered and anchored so that they can deal with the, you know, the, the stress, the, the nonstop stress that they are, 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 are under, right? So this is a practice that they use, that they learn um, so that they can get control of their physiology so that they can actually do their jobs and perform at a high level. So this is not namby-pamby stuff. I cannot stress enough uh, how important it is for you, especially now if you're working from home. Oh my goodness, it seems like working from home, we're on Zoom, we're on these cameras, we're on these devices longer than we were before. Some, some many, many of my clients, and I'm sure many of you are finding, you're working longer hours. <laughs> somehow, you're, somehow in the beginning, it seemed like you, you, know, you saved some hours from commuting maybe, but, you're somehow working longer hours. And then if you have children at home, there's just a lot of different stressors. So you gotta get control of that breath, right? And have a practice. So you can use the Navy SEAL technique or find one that works for yourself. Or maybe you take yoga out there and you know the deep belly breathing. So you wanna make that a practice. And you wanna practice getting off the dance floor at consistent intervals, right? So every hour, set that alarm, take 15 seconds, decompress 30 seconds, and then get back on the dance floor. The last thing I'll say about mastering your stress response is that it also gives you the ability to be present, right? To be present because stress is and worry is normally your future pacing, right? You're thinking about what's going to happen in the future or you're obsessing over something that happened, you didn't do right in the past. And, you, and, and so you're not present. You're not here in this moment. But when you can breathe deeply and really settle in and let that breath get you centered, then you can be totally present. And that is the way to elevate your personal presence. So um, let me hear what you think about that and what can you do? Like what's one thing you can do to really begin to master your stress response? What do you What do you think? So we'll watch for some answers coming in here. Um, Cheryl, what I love is I've noticed on my iWatch is when I get stressed out every once in a while, I'll say, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yes. You know, so yes. In some way, and I think you can even set those settings. So we do have some some tools there. Um, but I do think it's hilarious when I can tell that my heart rate's gone up because uh, I'm frustrated with something. My 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 watch tells me to take yes. a deep breath. <laughs> yes. So yes. We, we've got some good comments here on, you know, staying focused, constant focus on yesterday and tomorrow help. I mean, we got to get out of that mode and be present. And it is a good way to clear our minds, you know, when you're overwhelmed. Um, it, somebody said, for me personally, it's taking the time myself in the evenings to go work out. You know, those stress things are, you know, get in the moment, park everything, um, clear yourself. They're really key pieces um, for how you, you stay mentally there and be available for other things and, and for the people around you too. Absolutely. And I want to really, and I also want to underscore that this is, this is in addition to, you know, being, being there for people around you and all those things, these, this is a way to build your brand. Again, think about it. Uh, if you're a person who is, you know, has some degree of centeredness right now, um, that inspires incredible trust right? People will come to you. People will trust you. If you're, if you're, you know, all over the place and sort of chaotic and, and caught up with this stuff, it, it becomes a brand, um, you know, a brand buster. If you are, uh, get hijacked by stress and you, you know, misspeak or you're reactive in some way, um, that could damage your brand. 
especially now that we're online. Like it just seems like, you know, things are just so much more intensified now that we're online. Your ability to be present to other people, that's a brand builder. So these are things that actually build your brand, which build your, your repress, elevate your presence and increase your ability to influence outcomes. So this is not just about, um, you know, the working out after work is great because it gets rid of stress in one way, but also throughout the day, that ability to get off the dance floor, then to be present, to be able to pull out and be more strategic, then get into the into the weeds, into the details. So you want that kind of flexibility and agility. Great. We did, Excellent. while you move on to the next one, there is somebody who comment, just that focus in the morning of what do I want to get done from a productivity standpoint, but then also wrapping up the day with what am I grateful for? You know, just that sort of bl blessings at the end of the day that I think can really create some closure, some some satisfaction. I, I can imagine that that's also a nice way to wrap up. It is, and I love that description. They're I call them protocols, right? So with my clients, I'll work out with them a, a morning protocol, right, to help them really get prepared for high performance, and then an evening protocol that helps them transition from business or work to home and then to, you know, relaxing and rest, resting well. So you have to have those protocols to really, especially now, because work from home requires actually structure, right? So many people um, who, if you've not worked from home a lot before, it, it can, you can all of a sudden find yourself where it's like, you don't know what day it is. It's like, you know, you're, you know all, all of the structure is, is, is gone and you really do need structure, especially to work from home. So I love what whoever shared that about their morning protocol, their evening protocol. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's look at the third thing. Oh, my favorite. This is one of my favorite things. Well, everything's one of my favorite things to talk about, but this is one of my favorites. So level up your vision. I love talking about vision. Um, and so here's what here's what I mean by level up your vision. So many times um, our vision for ourselves, right? Our vision for our careers, our lives, our businesses are, are, are constrained by what we already know or what we've already experienced or what we've already seen, right? So they're, or, or what we think we can actually execute. And that is not the most powerful way to, to be um, uh, cultivating and activating your vision. So let's talk about this. So um, one of my favorite quotes is um, pain pushes until vision pulls, right? So usually we make changes or do big things or, or really strike out. Sometimes we'll strike out into our vision from a painful situation. Right, so um, I, I was thinking about this as I was putting this, this slide deck together and I was thinking for myself, in 2000, um, 2009, so in 2009, I lost everything. I had been a senior consultant for a, um, a, a global leadership development firm. I was flying all over the place. I'm you know, training people in London and I'm in Sydney and I'm all over the country. And I had this really incredible um, consulting gig with this firm. And uh, life was great, life was fantastic. And then 2007, business started slowing down. In 2008, um, business was completely slowed down. In 2009, I'd gone through my, my you know, 18 months of savings and the party was over and I lost everything during the recession. And um, what was interesting, it was, well, it was a painful and devastating experience. Um, I was able to land really well though at my, uh, my um, parents' house in California, and you know, had a little office and bedroom near the laundry room. So, so, so it worked. So I was able to like land well and and rebuild. But what happened when I when I when I landed was I thought, you know what, I need to be in business for myself. I'd always been an entrepreneur, and um, and while I was a consultant with this firm, I didn't have any side gigs or anything, side hustles going on. And I thought, you know, I really want to start my own coaching company and leadership development company. So in 2009, 10, I launched my company, Dow Leadership Development. And once I once I dared to do that, because I at the time I was listening to everyone saying, no, you got to get a job. Don't start a company. Why would you do this? You've lost everything you need to da 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 da. Right. Every everyone's concerned about me, friends and family. And but but my vision was I wanted to start my own company. And so that vision actually pulled me forward when I finally decided to do it. Now, here's the interesting thing. I actually had the, the, the impulse to start my business in 2007, 
it came to me, the name came to me. I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, but I didn't follow my vision. I didn't dare to dream it because my life was so good, so good as a, as a global consultant, you know? Um, and so I just sort of pushed that aside because I, I couldn't see how I could do it and, you know, just all these things. And my life was so good as a consultant that it's like, why would I do that? Well, you know, three years later, I had to do it. So the point I'm making is that pain pushes us, um, but the better thing is to ignite your vision and let that pull you, right? There's so much momentum in a vision pulling you forward and not letting um, what is known or other people's opinions or, um, or you know, thinking, well, I don't know how to execute it, so I'm not gonna even dream it. So I want to just invite you and dare you actually to dream big. Here's the thing, right now there's so much um, creative energy, right? There's so much with, with big disruption and big change and even big chaos. Um, it's also big creativity, big opportunities, if you're open to them. And if you're willing to dream big, if you're willing to let go of what is known and let go of what you think is possible and really allow yourself to dream about what is really possible. If I could wave a magic wand, if I could just you know, wave a magic wand, what would I really want my business to, to what level would I wanna be at? Or what would I want my life to be, right? So really daring to dream big, daring to, to wave that magic wand and admit to yourself, what is it you really want? What is, what is, what is your big, bold vision? And one of the things I, I really work with my clients around um, is vision and strategy are different things, right? So many times we think, um, <laughs> we create a strategy and we think that's a vision, right? So a vision is not a plan. A vision is what's possible. A vision is a dream. A vision is a possibility right? The strategy is the plan you create to execute the vision. But the, the tail, don't let the tail wag the dog. The strategy is the tail, right? You want your vision, you, you want to go ahead and cast your vision and to decide what do you, what do you want? You know, whether it's, uh, whether it's, you want to set a big goal for your, your business in terms of money or clients, you want to set some other big goal for yourself. You want a different lifestyle, um, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want, you want to really firmly uh, allow yourself to explore the vision. And once you've really gotten lit up by that vision, then you go create the strategy. Then you try to figure out, okay, how do I do that? Right? How do I make that happen? So guys, tell me what you're thinking about this, uh, about what I'm, what I'm saying about this. Yeah. So there's interesting, you know, people are talking a little bit about, you know, dreaming, you know, the, what keeps us from doing it is, you know, potentially fear or pain. One of the, the comments that I was thinking about in this is one of the fantastic parts about what's happening today is that people are very forgiving of organizations trying new things because they expect us to try new things. So if there's any time right now where people accept it, it is now. And it's yes. amazing. We're doing some things as an organization I never thought anybody would accept. And yet, people are excited about it. Like, oh good, let's try something new. We have our annual um, Joe Vincent conference. It's this, almost the 60th one this year. I think it's 58th. It's probably mm. been the same routine for years and years. And this year we had to really think completely different and we haven't gotten any negative feedback. And yet if, you know, a couple of years ago when we were talking about how do we switch this around, there's just this concern about, well, if we change it and people love it, what will happen? So I mm -hmm. think we have that platform right now. And, and the other thing that comes to mind for me as you're talking is, you know, if your dream doesn't take your breath away, it's probably not big enough, right? It should right. scare you a little bit. Like, right. oh, what does that look like? Yeah. And uh, that's when things get exciting. And that's when the celebration of achieving it, you get stretched. You know, we do these these exercises with our, with our staff and with my clients on, um, you know, what was your most your best self kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And you always mm -hmm. find out it's a, a situation where they were put into something they weren't prepared for. They had to stretch way out of their comfort zone. And it's probably the thing they're most proud of in their, their yes. lives when they look yeah. back. It was yeah. scary and yet they stretched. So, yes. um, and then I have somebody here who says strategy is always harder than vision for me. How do we get where we want to be? So yeah, I agree. 
the, the fact is get there. And then some of us are great at strategy. Some of us are great at vision. And I think that's where you find great people around you to help with those solutions. Absolutely. Absolutely. You find someone who can help you with that. But as a leader um, and as a business owner, you are in charge of the vision. That is your charge. If, if you, you know, as a leader and an and owner, an entrepreneur, that you're, you are the number one visionary because everything and everyone follows you and follows your lead and will go where you're pointing them, you know? So yes, your vision should be, your vision should scare you. And not in a way that makes you freeze, but in a way that really it calls you up into a challenge, right? Like, okay, I, I don't know how this is gonna happen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, take one step and then take the next step and then take the next step. There's incredible momentum in, um, in, in dreaming big and letting that vision pull you forward. So excellent, excellent. So you know what? Let me let me scoot on along here. Um, so here's an, here's uh, another thing that uh, is really interesting that I think is important right now. So typically, when we talk about brand, we talk about um, differentiators, right? So what differentiates you and what makes you stand out? And that's really important to know what your differentiators are. Uh, and to understand why should your clients, you know, choose you or your customers choose you um, when they can go to someone else who does exactly what you do. So it's important to know that. But here's something more important right now, I think, and that is to really, really, really know your audience, know your audience. And I'm speaking in terms of emotional intelligence or in marketing, it's also called um, sort of psycho, uh, like you have demographics and then you have psychographics, like what makes people move? What makes them buy? What, how do you influence them? And so there's some things I want you to think about in terms of knowing your audience. And I say this with my uh, clients, I have this thing I use called the three acts of influence. Um, and the number one way to influence others is you've got to know so you've got to know them. You've got to understand what makes them tick, right? What, how are they wired? You've got to understand that in order to influence. And so the two big questions I I, I have my clients understand or or that I uh, that I ask is what does your client or your customer most fear um, as it relates to whatever it is you're you're offering, and what is it they most desire, right? So what do they most fear could happen? If they, you know, buy your product or your service or they don't buy it, like what do they most fear can happen? What do they most desire to have happen? And right now, what's happening is that these fears and desires are really primal. Actually, they always are. But these fears and desires are really primal, right? Right, right now, people are, have really primal fears about, you know, what could happen. And they have really primal desires about what they most want to have happen. And so here's the, here's the trick. If what you're offering, if your service or your offer addresses their fear or their desire, so meaning what you're offering can keep what they fear from happening or what you're offering can bring them what they desire, then you have the ability to, and I mean authentically, not this is not manipulation or being fake or pretending. If legitimately what you're offering keeps their fear from them or brings them what they desire, then you have the ability to influence that audience. And sometimes what happens um, if, you know, in, in a sales process or in customer acquisition, sometimes we're very busy talking about us and our service and our differentiator and us, us, us and our stuff, right? Because we're trying to let them know all the bells and whistles and all the stuff we offer and all the ways we can help them without really understanding what do they really fear, right? What do they really desire? And, and, and how can I show them how what I'm offering actually addresses that, actually solves that for them? Right, that's that's the big thing right now, um, and and this happens with my clients. I, I work on this a lot because sometimes what happens is we we want to go into to a um, um, presentation, whether it's a sales presentation or um, you know in corporate, it, it wouldn't be called a sales presentation, but maybe you're pitching a a new idea, right? Or you want your bosses to 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 take on this new idea, so you're you're trying to influence them, um, and you know, people can be resistant or they don't want to change or they don't want to do something new or they don't think they need this additional product or service. And so you have to really get in there and understand what's going on for them and frame what you're offering as a way to make sure that they feel safe, right? That they feel protected, 
um, versus just coming at them with a lot of logic and a lot of informational things. So this is the number one thing. And, and I know that one of the poll questions said, uh, one of the poll questions, there was some uh, feedback about uh, not having, not, not being able to acquire clients the way you, you used to, right? Not, not having enough clients or being able to increase your number of clients. And so what I'm wondering is, is there a way for you to, to practice this influencing a little bit differently so that you can maybe sell more services to your existing clients if, that's, if those are legitimate sales for them, right? Are there ways that you can sort of think about what does this client most fear? Um, do they fear their family won't be protected? Do they fear losing um, something? Uh, and how can I how can I um, uh, present other products and services that may address those fears or address those desires? So what are your th what are your thoughts about that, guys? And how does your I want you to be thinking about how your service or your offer um, addresses their fears or desires? And what are your thoughts? So we'll let those come in. I'm just okay. going to give us a 10 minute warning here on timing. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I think that, you know, we've got some good comments here about, you know, even paying attention to generational parameters, what that can look like and, and understanding the difference between fear and desire, some good validation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is, I think this is our last one. So the last one, the last key for you to elevate your brand, your presence, and your influence uh, in 2021 and beyond, because we're going to be, um, you know, we're going to be at work from home, doing a lot of online stuff for at least the next this next year, I think, and then we're going to be doing it more frequently, even once we're sort of back and out and you know uh, moving around a little bit more freely. So shine online, your ability to shine online is going to be so, so, so important. So here's what I want you to be thinking about in terms of shining online, right? You want to be able to be engaging and expressive and present, right? Being able to decline distractions. So here's some really quick things you can do, right? So if you want to make sure you're not distracted, it just, you have to practice just a little bit of, men, uh, a little bit of discipline uh, to shut down all your windows, shut down your email, put your phone in the other room, right? Do do the physical things you know you need to do to uh, stay present and so that you're not on a call or on a meeting and checking your email. Now, you might not be able to do that all the time, but you want to think about what are the key meetings where I need to be present. So I need to remove all distractions, get everything, um, you know, get, get everything out of the way that may tempt me so I can be fully present, fully engaged, fully expressive for this particular video conference. Again, you might not be able to do all of them, but think about what are the ones that are really important. The other thing I want you to think about <clears throat> in terms of shining online is you do want to have a cohesive, um, and I forgot the word interesting, but a cohesive and interesting personal style and staging. Right. So you you do want to, you know, no matter, you know, uh, you, you want to be business upstairs, even if there's a party going on downstairs. Right. Uh, I heard somebody say that in one of my one of my shine online programs. So even if you have on like your yoga pants on the bottom or your Bermuda shorts or whatever it is, um, you do want to make sure that you have a good personal style and staging. So this means you want to look appropriate. So in the beginning, what I noticed is a lot of people. Um, especially in corporate where like, you know, they may have a casual Friday or something like that. But for my clients, usually they were you know, dressed professionally. But you know, since this work from home has happened, like people are super casual and their backgrounds can be super casual. And what I'm finding now that we're almost a year into the pandemic is that it's, it's impacting people's brands. Right. When when you show up and it's too casual, your background's too casual. You know, the first few months we had a great honeymoon about it. it was so much fun to laugh at. Oh, look at that junky thing behind Fred, blah, blah, blah. Or look at, you know, whatever's going on in people's background. Now we're a year on and um, the honeymoon's over. So now's the time to begin to really think about how you want to pull your, your style and staging and polish it up a little bit uh, so that it's not quite so casual unless that's your brand, right? But keep in mind, if you're trying to get new clients or you're working with existing clients and they want you to feel like you're the professional who they're, you know, you, you, you are there in good hands with you, then you want your background to match that, right? You want, um, I had a client who was a, um, 
uh, uh, works at, is a is a executive at a utility company, one of the rare uh, women who's an executive at a utility company, and um, and she she when she was wearing her son's um, gamer headphones that were bright silver, and um, you know, and just and and I think she was actually working in her son's room, and there were like all these sports things, and then she had on gamer headphones, and it's like that's not exactly that's not that's not congruent with your brand and what your um you know uh, it's great for people at work to see and have a sense of you personally, but after a while that is undermining your brand to come in with those big headphones and and the, all the sports paraphernalia and all that. So you want to make sure that that's cohesive, and then the last thing is. Um, in online meetings, less is more. You want to use what I call TED Talk principles, right? If you think about TED Talks, um, TED Talks are like 18 to 20 minutes, and they have big images, very few, very little, very few words on a slide, um, and the person's really telling a story, right? The TED Talk really changed. TED Talks really changed the game, right? Steve Jobs uh, presented in the same way. TED Talks the same way. So n big bold images. Um, you as the storyteller very, very uh, little copy and text on slides. And those are some of the principles of TED Talk and less is more, less time. So instead of an hour meeting, maybe it's a 40 minute meeting. Instead of a 30 minute meeting, maybe it's a 20 minute meeting. So I want you to be thinking about one thing you can do to begin to shine online. So as we do that, I'm gonna wrap up here um, and just do a little recap, right? So I want you to really be thinking about what is an inspired action you can take from this list, right? This radical responsibility that we talked about and the buy me mindset. Looking at ways to master your stress response. Leveling up your vision, your big, bold vision and daring to dream. Knowing your audience, what makes them tick? What do they fear? What do they desire? And then learning to shine online right, to make sure your style, your presence, and your being present uh, is really supporting your brand and your presence and your influence. So that is the end of what I have to offer today. We did a lot of Q and a lot of back and forth and Q and A um, as we went through this. Are there any other questions or comments that that you have about um, about any of this stuff? And here's how you can reach me if you wanna reach out via email or if you wanna connect with me on LinkedIn, that's a good way to um, to catch me is on LinkedIn. So, yeah, so we do have one specific question, which I think is great. And I know you answered it in a pr prior presentation. What type of microphone, um, headphone um, tools are you using because your sound is so excellent? Oh yes, yeah. so I'm using my Audio-Technica ATR, um, ATR 2100, Audio Technica, old school. I used to have an online radio show, and I bought this for pot for doing that podcast, and um, and I just have used it. And then I just bought another one. Um, I don't have it on my desk here. I just bought another mic. Of, uh, uh, I think it's called F I F E. But if you reach out to me, I'll I'll be happy to give you this information. And um, Merrick, can I let them know about my Shine Online course? Yeah, and you know what we'll do is we'll send something out after this event to everybody okay. who participated so we can share that. I know we're a little, I'm a little worried we're going to get kicked out of this in about three minutes. So okay. I want to make sure we're able to wrap up here as well. And um, I can send, a, I can send a little info, a little info list. If there are other questions, I can send a little um, list of information out. Perfect. Great. So we'll just wrap up here with a couple takeaways. And, you know, for me, I, th I think about, um, you know, what can I would actually get somebody to look at your screen and say, what does it look like behind you? Get some feedback from people as to what that perception is. I know we're working hard now to kind of make some alterations based on just watching some of the things you did. I will comment that, you know, one of my favorite books is called The Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly. Um, if you've never read it, it's a great tool for learning how to dream and thinking about mm. different things as a group. And I think there's a lot of takeaways we can do. I am curious if, if anybody wants to text in what your best tip is today that you, um, I think it, it actually did something else. So that's not going to work. I'm going to pass on that. I apologize. <laughs> All right. With that, I'm just going to wrap up. If you like today's presentation, I think you'll love the Joe Vincent presentations, especially the second one with Vanessa um, 
that you can see on February 2nd. But Joe Vincent's going to be the first, second, and third of February. And it's a 10 o'clock each day. It's just a one hour presentation each day. Each one is a powerful message. Um, we have a futurist on day one. We have a psychologist on day two who's going to talk about balancing warmth and competence mm -hmm. um, and how important that is when we're communicating with clients, prospects, our teams, managing up that type of thing. And then the third day will be about sales and growth and how to drive growth in 21. So with that, Rochelle, I want to thank you so much for participating with us today and joining our event. And I hope people will join our Facebook page. And I know we're going to see you around again, I'm sure. So you have a wonderful day and happy January to everybody. We'll see you all soon. Thank you so much, Merritt. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.